Horns! Horns! Are horns OP? I don't know. Let's <laughs> let's see, bro. <laughs> horns! 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 Hey, Players yo. have a wide selection of equipment. Okay, now those. Actually, those are not really OP. Yo, I remember you gave me the same advice to just do it when I asked you advice on starting content creation. Exactly, bro. I'm now at 3K followers on TikTok and. St See, bro, you have to just do it. Nothing's gonna happen if you just want, 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 want. Equipment to choose from when specking their character: teeth, claws, stingers, spikes. Each weapon has distinct advantages and disadvantages in combat. Some, like Teeth, are better at dealing damage but offer less range and require the user take a significant risk committing to an attack attempt. Claws are a good middle ground, offering solid damage but allowing the user to keep their vitals at least a little bit further away from counterattack range. On the other end of the spectrum is what I'd like to discuss in today's video. I wouldn't want no claws. If we if we talking strictly nature, uh, not I wouldn't want no like crab claws. I think a lion, I think a lion or like a, a lion or like a, a tiger cheetah, that's, that's the type of animal I would want to be. But looking at it, horns could be kind of cool. Horns and antlers. This video was sponsored by Audible. Excluding things like projectiles, skull-based weapons have perfect timing. What the fuck? Been working on a dream for years now. Keep being inspiring. Appreciate you, man. Excluding things like projectiles, skull-based weapons I ain't never have seen by that far before. the furthest reach in the game. This makes them excellent defensive weapons, as it gives players a large threat range that an Damn. approaching player needs to find a way to get through in order to connect with their own attack. Against a player with powerful horns or large antlers, messing up your approach and getting counterattacked can spell disaster. Oh, oh, Since oh, these Twitch, remember, uh, this is th th this is literally for educational purposes. We're learning here. These attacks can deal devastating damage when they connect. However, actually connecting with a strike isn't always easy for players who spec into this trait. Since skull projections can be quite heavy and cumbersome, swinging them can be quite slow and risky in and of itself. Because if the attack is dodged by an aggressive opponent, right to the it might neck. be left wide open to getting rushed down and taking a ton of damage. Right to the neck. So today, I'd like to delve deeper into the advantages and disadvantages that come with equipping skull weapons to your character, and discuss some examples of good and bad usage of this perk. The two main types of skull weapons are horns and antlers. Okay, what do y'all think? What do y'all think is better right now in the chat? Do y'all think horns are better or antlers? I mean, antlers look fucking crazy. Antlers look fucking crazy, but are horns more durable? Horn I guess they're more durable and they're more sharp, sharp, huh? I don't know. I don't know. Antlers look wild. It looks like you can stop a lot of stuff with antlers. And if you miss with the horns, bro, like you, you you're getting you're getting hit in the neck. Horns are permanent and usually equipable to both sexes, whereas antlers are grown and shed each year, and usually a perk exclusive to male characters. Mm. Players in the Servid faction have exclusive access to antlers, while horns can be equipped to a wide variety of character types and have the major advantage of being permanent. Those are Large nice. antlers are useful for resource competition against other players, and occasionally to deter predators, but really their primary function is tied to the reproduction questline. Part of the servant quest line is that in order to complete the mating quest, male characters need to become party leader. And in order to achieve the rank of party leader, a servant must duel against other male servant characters Bambi! and defeat them. Antlers allow these players to- I like how he's like- I like how he's the, uh, describing this in like gaming terms and shit. The duel in a way that tests their strength while still remaining mostly non-lethal, as these players don't actually want to team kill their own party members. As far as combat abilities go, antlers probably aren't the most optimal choice. Ah, uh, damn. They okay. weigh the user down quite a bit, make it more difficult to move through dense forest, and the enormous amount of energy it takes to shed and regrow them on a regular basis makes them a handicap rather than a perk. Look at this they don't guy. Have any secondary uses either. Damn, it looks cool though, man. I guess horns it is, man. They can be used to dig with, but there's no upside to using antlers to dig rather than your feet. In short, antlers are a flex, the kind players can really only get away with when they're already doing quite well and have resources to spare. And even then, antler users tend to ditch the trait as soon as the window to complete the mating questline closes for the year. Horns, on the other hand, 
can be used to great effect against a wider variety of opponents. Ooh. Large horns can deal devastating piercing damage and can also be used to inflict knockback. Okay. Destabilizing even the most aggressive uh, players and creating an opening for a deadly strike to connect. However, they're really only useful in 1v1 combat, since a group of attackers can easily overwhelm a horn user from multiple We're directions learning. at once Jesus Christ. and prevent them from connecting a strike. So it's important to balance your character with oh other traits like God. bulk or speed to help compensate for this weakness. Skull weapons were added to the game's equipment roster during the late Tetrapod expansion. <laughs> He's literally talking about this like like this is a, ga a, a game. I think I just fell in love with this, these videos, man. Possibly serving to facilitate party member recognition and later being co-opted for defensive purposes. While data miners are unsure whether early horn users like the Triceratops build had horn attacks as an integral part of their combat movesets, players in the current meta employ a wide variety of strategies to get the most out of their WDLC. <laughs> Tank builds like the Rhinoceros tend to use horns primarily for the knockback effect in 1v1 matchups, though they're capable of inflicting lethal piercing damage as well. More oh, agile builds shit. like the Wildebeest and Cape Buffalo coordinate team defenses against predators that employ both horn and kick attacks oh and have a high critical hit ratio due to the sharpness of their This is so educational, isn't it, Chad? Fuck. Horns. Some animals with skull weapons favor other types of attacks, using their long legs as the primary line of defense against predators, and mostly use their skull mods to fight against others of the same build type. As powerful and impressive as horns are, their overall contribution to the viability of a character is less than you might expect, especially in terms of how vital they are to a player's game plan for dealing with predator Always protecting attacks. Always young! Most horn users spend a ton of evolution points on their base speed stat to avoid confrontation with more powerful players. True, they do have a speed boost. They do have a, a significant speed boost. ...in the first place, meaning that heavy skull equipment actually impedes this strategy oh rather than... Oh my gosh! What the fuck is wrong with it? Did you You guys see that? Meaning that heavy skull equipment actually impedes this strategy rather than synergizing Jesus with it. Christ. Horn attacks tend to be employed as a last resort with varying degrees of success since their base oh God, accuracy the is, is so low. <laughs> Horns <laughs> lose their value in combat if the player's head is immobilized. So to use this perk effectively, the build should have a high base stamina and access to a variety of other attacks that can counter a grappling opponent. Did you see the did you see the combo, bro? Since most animals with horns and antlers defend themselves more effectively with their feet, yeah. there are plenty of examples of similar builds like zebras and camels that are equally viable without horns equipped at all. However, in builds like rhinos that spec into bulk instead of speed, horns are fundamental to their combat strategy and viability suffers significantly if their horns are damaged. Damn. When equipping your character, it's important to consider both your own character's stats and the types of attackers you're likely to encounter. In a random galaxy LMAO before you decide to spec exactly, into an expensive skull weapon. For example, if the primary threat in your server is a build from the Panthera faction, horns might not be the most optimal choice, since a big cat's primary objective is to land a critical strike on the opponent's neck. Accurate. So you may be better off investing in more forceful kicks that can be used while keeping your head out of reach. Accurate. But if the meta is more centralized around canine builds, front-facing weaponry may be the better option, since canines tend to target their prey's rear and get kills via bleed damage. Mm. The most viable horn users are well-rounded with respect to speed, bulk, and overall combat movesets. But most importantly, they spec their characters to be best equipped to counter the most dangerous threats in the current meta. Now, since the best- He died. Insight into the metagame can be found in books. Gaining the knowledge necessary to be <laughs> properly equipped can be tough, especially if your character's eyesight or concentration stats aren't the best. But the good news is, in an effort to make eyesight a less overpowered ability, the devs have started introducing more benefits to players that spec into auditory abilities. One of which is the advent of the audiobook. Audiobooks are an amazing w way to w ad, w ad placement. optimize your efficiency, allowing you to gain XP in another skill while lie, also increasing a, your knowledge stat passively. Where can you get access w to these ad, overpowered bro. gains? The answer is Audible, the sponsor of today's video. Audible has the world's- That is a W ad. Okay, hold on. I knew this topic, this topic alone, because the title, it just sounded interesting. But that video in general was interesting. Now I want to see. Chat, are humans OP? Are humans OP? Are we? Let's see. This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Talk to me. No, I feel like, human, I feel like humans are definitely OP.
Bro, we're literally wiping out animal, animal, uh, we're literally wiping out animals. We're wiping out everything. We're above everything. Yo, Dante, I was in your God of War stream earlier. We went earlier. to the moon, bro. Apparently, we finally getting snow in Virginia Beach. Uh, so it would be fun tomorrow. if we could our stats before we were born. Yo, stats would be cool. Human beings. Are they as overpowered as the game's community would lead you to believe? Yes. Short answer? They're- it's actually broken. Yeah. They're the most meta-defining build of all time, and the undisputed top build in the current expansion. But believe it or not, this wasn't always the case. Humans used to get body left and right on a daily basis by other players. And it took a pretty long time before the player base learned how to actually make use of the human build's unique abilities. The story of the human's rise to dominance is a really interesting one. And so today, we're going to do an in-depth look at the human's abilities, their strengths, and their weaknesses. Because yes, they do have weaknesses. We'll also go over notable matchups, and finally look at the steps human players took in order to reach their dominant status. The thing about humans, though? Rhino horn equals meta. Lion claws overrated AF. No, Lion Claws... I feel like Lion Claws is... Well, shit, maybe you're right. I don't know. Uh, humans... Humans are OP, but... There's a lot of team... There's a lot of team damage. It's literally only team damage. First, the unique abilities. I touched on this topic in my video about primates, but I'll recap here and also go into more detail. First off the bat, we have their ability to throw things. Other builds can throw things, but humans can do so harder, faster, and further than anyone else. The reason for this is their body structure. Bipedal builds are tough to balance, both in the game development sense and the center of mass sense. Throwing an item with any real force behind it requires serious balance, achieved only by having shorter arms and longer legs. Mm. This is why humans can launch projectiles at deadly speeds, whereas other primates kind of just lob things without putting much effort into it. If they tried to, they would knock themselves over. Even if chimpanzees could figure out how to craft a spear, there's no way they could throw it hard enough to deal any significant damage. Next, their stamina regeneration. Mm. Humans can chase down anything. If you try to run from a human, you might outspeed them initially, but you'll run out of stamina much sooner than they will, and they'll catch up to you while you're in your weakened state. This is partially because of their superior balance again, but mostly it's because of the human build's unique choice to not spec into fur. This gives them access to the extremely broken ability Sweat. Every other current build that's decent at distance running recharges stamina by using the move Pant. Oh! Dante, this is my first time donating. Keep up the good work. I said not Americans, though. This works great, but it does require the user to stop running. Sweat, on the other hand, works better while moving. Massively- That's actually broken! Like, that's- No, that's actually broken. Extending the distance a human player can run. They've got a few other important abilities that are essential to their kit, but aren't unique to humans. Their ability to speak is unique among mammals, but some birds can pull it off too. Sure. In humans, the ability to speak allows them to use one of their signature moves, Teach, which drastically boosts skill point gain, mitigating the main penalty a player receives upon getting a game over. Humans and birds also share another unique trait, which is being able to stand upright. Standing upright is extremely useful for dealing with stealth builds that might normally be using tall grass to hide. Mm -hmm. Tool use also might be thought of as a human-exclusive move, and it certainly is the most effective in humans. But it turns out yeah, a pretty wide say. array of other builds can also do it. They be Birds, primates, cephalopods, and even fish can use tools on occasion. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of other builds that can use, like, use tools and shit. But sweating and throwing, uniquely human. Yeah, that sweating now is broken. to their weaknesses. And yes, it's true that currently most human players can subvert these with their crafting skill. But it's important. Uh, this build's weakness? Color. <laughs> <laughs> to recognize that without equipment, the human build isn't necessarily unstoppable. The decision to not have fur granted humans a massive buff to mobility at the cost of stealth. <laughs> In the mammal faction, fur is a prerequisite to all the major stealth abilities like camouflage, mm -hmm. and lack of stealth abilities means getting in close on their targets is a serious challenge. The human build's lack of fur also means they have very Oh my god, defense, this movie was so both from good! from attacks and from environmental effects. Bear skin offers almost zero armor, to the point where even players from lower weight classes have no trouble dealing damage to humans. Yeah, bro. There's a yo. There's a literally a lot of character models that are broken. Stevo, Stevo stats. Everybody on Jackass. Their stats are fucking broken, bro. <laughs> their stats are ridiculously broken. 
The movie, the movie is called, uh, fuck. It's with, it's with, um, it's just so good. I remember I seen it in theaters. It was The Revenant. So good, bro. And bear skin also takes quite a bit of damage from the sun too. Humans are also pretty limited when it comes to the power stat. Physically, they're the weakest of the great apes and don't really have any good options for dealing damage. They lack oh the classic goodness. high damage bite attack that nearly every other non-herbivorous build relies on. Instead, having to resort to blunt attacks like punch and kick, which we all those. know aren't very effective against builds that have thick fur or skin. Yeah. The last major weakness I can see is that they're pretty bad at dealing with stealth. The lack of night vision means darkness can really hamper their ability to locate targets. Mm. And their lack of a strong sense of smell means camouflage is especially useful against them. Okay, now let's talk about matchups. Okay! Obviously, a key feature of the human build is being able to craft equipment. Tools, yes. Given basic equipment, like low-level armor and hunting gear, the human's best matchup is... What is this from? What is this from? What is this from? ...going to be medium-large mammals. Unlike blunt damage, piercing damage is quite effective versus build Smash? with thick hide. I was like, what do I know defense, this But on defense, they're actually pretty awful. A human's only option on defense against a large mammal is intimidation, Ugh. unless they've got some crazy high-level equipment. Yeah. But I'll make a video on power creep later. The classic human equipment cannot stop a charging tank main unless the intimidate attempt works. But overall, this matchup is one of the reasons humans became top tier. Hardly any builds have favorable matchups against tanks. Yeah. But that's not to say humans don't have their counters, though. As I said before, Stealth can be really effective against them due to their lack of a keen sense of smell and night vision. Humans have the ability to win pretty much any fight as long as they- I remember this! I remember this! This was the craziest shit I've ever seen! Time to prepare. But, taken by surprise, humans have a lot fewer options. Another thing humans have trouble dealing with is flight. <laughs> Even when a human has a ranged weapon, players with high aerial mobility are pretty safe during flight. Now, as far as I know, there aren't any bird builds powerful enough to one-shot humans, which is mm. important because nope. blunt attacks like punches are actually quite effective against birds. Birds have hollow bones that are resistant to tension and torsion, but not compression. Mm. This is the opposite of mammal bones, which are resistant to compression and tension, yep. but not torsion. The point is, birds aren't the best choice against humans, but flight has been unlocked by four different classes in the game. Birds, which we just discussed aren't a good choice. Bats, which do even less damage than birds. Reptiles, which unfortunately had their aerial builds banned insects? in patch 1.3.1. Like bugs? And insects. Ah. Flying eusocial insects have by far the best matchup versus humans <laughs> in the entire game. Humans have zero counterplay against a swarm of stinging insects. True. I mean, sure, there are special items that they can use to combat swarms if they're prepared. Actually, the true. Human mains who've chosen. We need to. F <laughs> they Yo, if they patch that, it's over, though. If, if, if there's some as there's some way we pass that, it's over, man. Using that as one of their prestige abilities is pretty small. Humans' lack of fur means they have no innate defense against stings. Stings also have the chance to proc the Amphalaxis debuff, which can actually lead to a game over. Yeah. And it's for this reason that the high score for human eliminations belongs to the Africanized honeybee, known better by its community-given name, the killer bee. And even if the stings don't proc the allergic reaction effect, they will still definitely achieve their primary goal of dropping their resolve to zero and granting you control over the territory. And we can see that lately, the viability of killer bees has only been growing now that they've expanded their territory outside of Africa. Which brings me to my main point. Are humans overpowered? Well, just like the Africanized honeybee, yeah. humans really only became OP once they escaped the African server and invaded other areas. <laughs> Notice how humans took down megafauna across every terrestrial server except Africa. The African tank mains have the matchup experience and counterplay options to deal with the vast array of skills humans have access to. But the rest of the community was totally unprepared to deal with the rapid invasion of new human mains invading their competitive scene. In other words, the devs could have prevented the massive destabilization of the current meta if they'd region locked humans. Imagine. Staying competitive in the meta requires a good player constantly be leveling up their skills. There's no better example of this than the rapid rise to dominance that humans experienced. If you'd like to level up your own skills and unlock new ones, I highly recommend Skillshare. Oh, why he so Skillshare smooth with it? Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in design, business, technology, and Bro, more. that transition Premium was so clean it caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, what? What the fuck? Yo, why are these... Like, why was... Why is that shit so interesting, bro? I'm gonna save these other ones for later. It's like, dolph are dolphins OP or crocodiles OP, bro? Like, oh my gosh. Elephants OP? Honey bads are OP. These are some good ass videos, man. <laughs> Yo, chat.